Welcome to this week's Rick's Roundup. Political commentators Peter Klepper, editor-in-chief for Rick's Europe, and Scarlett Karolev, a host and reporter for Rick's Europe. Nice to see you back. Glad to be back. The Resemblement National Party RN and the whole ID group announced the end of its alliance with Germany's Alternative for Germany, AFD, due to a controversial statement. Peter, could you tell us what specific statement led to uh, led RN to decide uh, to end its alliance with AFD and how will it impact the relationship between the two parties? Well, the uh, lead candidate for the Alternative for Germany party, uh, Maximilian Kra, uh, he made some uh, very controversial uh, statements about the SS, uh, the, the German uh, Nazi army division during World War II, uh, which were seen as, you know, playing down, um, you know, the severity of the crimes of the, of the SS. Uh, now, um, this was, um, you know, used basically as uh, the ultimate um, straw, uh, the ultimate reason for um, um, the uh, party of Marine Le Pen in France and uh, the Italian uh, Lega party to say we do, do not want to, uh, you know, uh, to sit with that party anymore. And, and shortly after, the whole ID group decided to kick out the AfD. And uh, Scarlett, how might Aaron's decision to sever ties with AFD affect the future composition and alliances with the European Parliament's right-wing groups after the upcoming elections? I think we first we need to understand why they made this decision, because they clearly want to position themselves. And R&D really said that they don't want this label as being seen as an extreme right party. They want to show them to the public that they are a party that is also capable of going to lead, also form an alliance with possibly the EPP and really make some changes inside the European Parliament. And ID clearly is following that path of wanting to show like, look, we're here, we're reasonable, we're not as extreme right as they're trying to condemn us. And they're doing it by distancing themselves. How this is going to play out, this is what we'll have to wait after the elections. It's too early day to make any conclusions yet. Peter Scarlett mentions a fear of uh, extreme right uh, wing parties. Uh, do you agree with this statement? Is is there a, a fear of this association? Uh, yeah, you could see that the uh, the socialists and the Greens are becoming very nervous, um, not just uh, because at the European level, but um, in the member states, you have cooperation with uh, right-wing populist parties. I think far-right is a bit of a uh, questionable label. People associate that with neo-Nazis uh, and stuff. So, so um, um, in the Netherlands, of course, there's now this, uh, you know, this deal. But also in, in other countries, uh, you see right-wing populist forces um, working together um you know on on uh, on government policy and it's interesting that uh, Ursula von der Leyen who's sadly likely to be uh, reappointed as commission president that she um she seems to be open to working more closely with uh, the prime minister of uh, of Italy uh, which is also uh, clearly from the right wing populist uh, uh, spectrum uh, so, yeah, a lot of those walls are being broken down. And I think that's also one of the reasons why uh, uh, Marine Le Pen and um, and the Italian Lega Party, they, they, they are just sick and tired of the uh, the, the German uh, uh, alternative for Germany, which is is not moderating. It's becoming ever more extreme. It's mostly the Eastern German faction that is coming up with ever more uh, radical uh, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, even uh, bizarre, uh, you know, uh, statements uh, that um, that are are not doing anything to clean up the image of the of the party. Scarlett, uh, there's some trouble in the Renew Party. Could you tell us more about that? Yes, we're seeing an interesting case. So, as you know, I'm from the Netherlands, and we finally have a coalition after six months of. And it's negotiations. And part of that is the Fave Day. The Fave Day is a liberal party. It's part of Renew. And Renew party leader, actually, she's a French MEP. Her name is Valérie Haye, actually said that they want to have a vote after the elections to kick out the Fave Day because they're co-governing alongside Kurt Wilder's Fave Day. 
Now, this is something that is sparking a lot of fear. Uh, we saw it yesterday as well during the debate of the EBU with all the Spitzen candidates for the presidency of the Green Commission. They want renew to kick us save the day because they're afraid of right wing parties coming actually into power and actually really starting to make policies on a national level. And I think it's really interesting because one last thing that I want to add to this, the lady in question, we're talking about Valérie Hayé, the party leader. She's a French MEP. The Dutch people did not elect her. Yet, she's feeling entitled to dictate us who should be in our coalition, who should govern us, regardless of the results of a democratic election. I think it really shows that Brussels is thinking they can really dictate for national governments how they should be governed. They really want to have all those power, which should be actually on a national level. And uh, moving on to the UK general election set for July 4th. Peter, what do you believe are the key issues that the voters should be considering in the UK? And what will they most likely focus on? Well, uh, Rishi Sunak, uh, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, he took everybody by surprise by announcing um, you know, elections on the 4th of, uh, of July already. It was expected that uh, he was going to uh, announce uh, an election, but everybody thought that this was going to be later this year. And, uh, you know, it's a mystery why he did. Uh, no political commentator seems to be sure. Um, maybe there was a risk that he would be deposed as, uh, you know, prime minister, unlikely. Um, or he was just sick and tired, some people think. Uh, or um, he thinks that his the new inflation statistics will convince the British voter to vote for the Conservatives, which are polling very bad in the opinion polls. Um, so it's a bit of a mystery, but what we know is that um, the British Conservatives are likely to be kicked out of power after um, uh, 14 years. Uh, it's also interesting that Nigel Farage uh, will not be running. He has announced that he will focus on uh, helping his friend uh, Donald Trump get elected in uh, in the United States uh, this year. Uh, so Farage will not play uh, a major role. Uh, so um, in a way, this is good news for the Conservatives. But yeah, because of the fact that they have uh, basically almost not um, fulfilled any of their promises made over, um, you know, 14 years, eh? Uh, there's still immigration chaos, uh, taxes are up, not down. Um, it's likely that uh, Labour will come to power. You mentioned uh, Nigel Farage's uh, absence from this election. How do you think that that might affect Reform UK? Um, well, this uh, this party has been polling, I think, up to 10%. Um, people think that because Nigel won't be running, that it will uh, now lose, it will now be losing a bit of popularity. But you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much. In the United Kingdom, it's very difficult to come up with a new party because they have a majority system, which means that in the electoral districts, uh, you need to, um, you know, convince a majority of the voters in order to, you know, um, to have an elected uh, representative. So for newcomers, it is uh, very difficult. If you really want change, you need to work within the existing parties. Uh, and it is unlikely that Nigel Farage will pop up in the Conservative Party. At this point, it's, uh, it's too late uh, anyway. So that uh, concludes uh, this week's Rick's Roundup. Thank you, political commentators Peter Klepper, editor-in-chief for Rick's Europe, and Scarlett Karolieva, host and reporter for Rick's Europe. And thank you, as always, for watching Rick's Europe.